I'm a neuroscientist by training, focusing on a particularly lethal form of childhood brain cancer called diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma, or DIPG. Most patients diagnosed with DIPG are under 10 years old and survive for less than a year. And their quality of life tends to decline rapidly as the tumor progresses. The first discovery that we made was that the activity of a neuron promotes the growth of brain cancer cells, gliomas like glioblastoma and diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma. That's important because it allowed us for the first time to understand a major mechanism for cancer growth and opened avenues for how we might be able to stop that growth. And as we studied those tumors, we discovered that they were emerging from a particular kind of neural precursor cell, those that uh, give rise ultimately to the glial cells that form myelin, which is important for learning and memory in the brain. And as we began to understand more and more about these brain cancers, it seemed clear they were exploiting these mechanisms of development and plasticity instead of to promote things like learning and memory to promote their own growth. And this synaptic communication, this electrical communication between the nervous system and the cancer was fundamental to glioma growth. In recent years, we've been looking together with a collaborator here at Stanford, Julian Saj, and, and together with one of my former trainees, Hamsa Venkatesh, at how brain metastases might be taking advantage of, of some of the same mechanisms that the primary brain cancers, like gliomas, are taking advantage of. We find very similar uh, responses of small cell lung cancer cells to their interactions with, with neurons. So I think the model of these interactions is clearly not limited to brain tumors, but also can be applied to brain metastases, including for small cell lung cancer. In understanding these interactions, a number of potential new therapeutic avenues for patients come to light. One possibility is to disrupt these direct interactions between the nervous system and cancer that are growth or invasion promoting. And what's exciting about that is that we may be able to repurpose existing medications that we already use in the fields of neurology, psychiatry, and cardiology. There has really just been an incredible explosion of new understanding and being able to therapeutically target these nervous system cancer interactions is going to hopefully improve outcomes for patients.